Hey everybody, welcome back to another gripping episode of Gecko's Trails. Another nightly walk and talk. So, I don't know where I'm supposed to be looking on this. Yeah, right there. <laughs> anyway, you know, as long as I've used this phone, I should know by now. Nope, not there. Anyway, I'm being stupid. Uh, so, I've got some different, different news. Some good news. Hopefully some really good news. Um, not necessarily about hiking, but it will allow me to hike. So, let me go ahead and turn you around and I'll get into the news. <laughs> All right. Well, first things first, I'm going to start off with, uh, you know, just letting you know what's going on. It's a beautiful Saturday evening. Nice little sunset going on. Uh, as you know, I'm living in my own apartment nowadays. By myself, I got my trusty roommate Muse, my cat. You've seen him in the vi previous videos. So, life is good still working at Amazon and I've been getting high praise from my my boss my bosses about my work which is good uh, we just had prime week so we've been busy hope everybody got everything you needed off of Amazon and you were able to make some savings. So I ordered like five or six different things. And I didn't get anything off. <laughs> None of it was on sale. <laughs> anyway. Um, so that's pretty much the, the update on things going on in my life right now. Ooh almost a full moon out there look at that that's nice I think tomorrow or later on tonight is the actual full moon come on there we go it's that time of night lights are coming on so anyway, the first bit of news that's coming up is I found a company that works with veterans who already have a VA disability to try to upgrade their disability and get a better rating. So I filled out their questionnaire and talked to them on the phone and they went through their checklists and everything and come to find out I'm eligible possibly for a dozen or more separate claims than the two I have. Right now I've claimed my lower back uh, 10% and my hearing which is uh, the tinnitus, the ringing in my ears and that's an, also 10% so I get a, a rating of 20% right now. Um, but beyond those two, there's like a dozen more things that I can claim or, or attempt to claim. So I'm going to try and some of them have ratings of 50% of or more. So it's my goal to end this process with a hundred percent disability rating. So, and I'll get into what 
that will give me later. Some of the things that I'm claiming is uh, quality of life, which due to my, my back and my hearing, I'm almost not able to work. Um, these days, I am in pain almost daily from uh, my back. And my hearing is making it to where it's hard for me to understand people when there's a lot of noise around me. Um, everything bleeds together and I can't understand what they're saying. And uh, that's not good. So, that's one of them I believe is a 50% rating. Um, another thing I'm going to try to claim is my suffocation phobia, which is directly related to my having to wear a gas mask in basic training and going through the gas chamber. There was definitely trauma there. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't think so, and it never really cropped up until the pandemic, and I had to wear a face mask. And then with the face mask on, I would... Um, hyperventilate and have a panic attack and passed out. I passed out a couple of times just from wearing the face mask. Um, and I beat myself up about it and just tried to think of why that would be the case. And the only thing I could come up with was having to wear that, that gas mask in the army. Um, so that's one of the claims. There's some other claims that I'm not really going to get into because it's of a personal nature um, but there's also another separate claim that's kind of related to my lower back is sciatica which is you know a pinched nerve that, that uh, I have shooting pains down my leg or in my tailbone um, that's an entirely separate claim um, let's see what else. My, my neck and shoulders. Um, my neck has been really stiff for the past several years. And it's caused me problems in my shoulders to where I've had loss of mobility. Um, I couldn't raise my arm even level to the ground without extreme pain. And I actually had to go through physical therapy to to correct that, but I, it still crops up, uh, and I have shoulder pain. That's a separate claim. Um, and there's there's some other things that I can claim, but I'm hoping that you know once I go through the the um, the doctor's visits and and get the evaluations done that I, all total I'll have that 100% so what that would mean was with uh, me claiming myself as the veteran and of course having my wife um, having my wife um, as part of my, my life actually increases the amount of money that I would get just just me the veteran by myself um, is a lower monetary value than if I'm with somebody else and potentially having to support somebody else that uh, brings the amount that I'd be eligible for up like almost almost thousand um, dollars so in the end the amount that I would get with 100% disability rating with my with me having a spouse would be I believe it was $3,800 a month $3,800 so with all of my bills together a month they only come up to like maybe $1,800 So, 
that would leave me at the end of paying my bills every month uh, basically $2,000. Every month, you know, once I pay my bills, I have two thousand extra dollars. That means I don't have to save money to go through hike. I'll have money every month to through hike on. So I'm hoping that I get this rating approved before the next through hiking season, which is, you know, next April or May. Um, hopefully April. And I would be hiking the Appalachian Trail to start with. Um, now, I don't know how, you know, my back and everything and my knee. And my knee is another thing I'm going to try to claim again because I've had uh, different pains pop up related to my knee injury. Um, which, in the, in the evaluation that they did the last time I got my rating was it was normal wear and tear. Well, obviously it's not normal wear and tear if I'm having pain down the side of my knee now, constantly. Um, and, I mean, I have medical records from when I was in the Army about that knee injury. So, um, I don't know why they said it was normal wear and tear, honestly. Um, but I'm going to try to claim it again and hopefully with this new pain that's cropped up uh, it'll get approved um, so now it comes to the fee that I would be responsible for for using this company to help me um, one of the things they asked me and the interview process was you know um, would I be comfortable with using them as the service versus you know trying to get this done this process done uh, by seeing a VA representative or doing it myself I said well for one thing this is what I replied I said for one thing I don't know the ins and outs of what I can claim what I can't claim um, a VA re representative, yeah, he's going to help me, but he's also going to be mindful of the VA's bottom dollar, you know. So he's not going to necessarily help me to the point where I'm going to get approved. Versus this company, which is doing it solely for a profit. They know the ins and outs of the system, what I can claim, what I can't claim. Some of the things that... Even a VA representative isn't going to necessarily know that they can claim. Um, and they are going to be with me every step of the way. Trying to get me as high a rating as I can. Because that's going to mean they're going to get the most money that they can out of me. Now, I don't fault them for trying to get a profit. And, and in the end, it's helping me out. <coughs> just as much as it's helping them out so their fee it's nothing up front i don't have to pay anything out of pocket up front the only way they get paid is if my rating increases and what they get is five times the difference between the new rating and the old rating so if i got the hundred percent and i got the thirty eight hundred dollars I'm currently getting $338 for 20%. So they would take the $338, subtract it from the $3,800, then multiply that times five. That's how much I would owe them. It ended up being like $20,000. That would be my fee. But here's where, where the checks that I get come into play. Once I'm approved... They have to pay me a back pay lump sum check from the date of the approval to the date of the application. So if that's six months, eight months, say it's six months, I would get six times the $3,800. So I'm, I'm not sure how much that would be, but it's more than $20,000, that's for sure. 
So I would take the $20,000 and give it to them, keep whatever's left, and then I have the $3,800 monthly VA disability check from then on. So even though it is a lot of money, it would be out of a lot more money that I'm getting up front uh, um, from my my current from my my next like VA disability check. So even though it's expensive as hell, it's it's worth it to have the the medical expertise behind me fighting for me to get the highest rating that I can because they're also getting it for the highest rating that they can for me for them you know so it's definitely worth it and and if I get the rating you know sooner than the six months um, you know I'll give them the entire lump sum amount and then have a payment schedule uh, hammered out to repay the rest of it like a, a monthly payment until it's paid off which is still fine you know so this is a good thing and, and the company is called Trajector Medical if, if you if you're interested in it I have a link that I can provide anyone who's interested and and they can they can possibly help you if you're a disabled veteran trying to get a higher rating to get a higher rating it is 100% worth it I mean they're 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 upfront about everything that's gonna happen all the fees that they're going to ask for me. And if my rating stays the same, it doesn't change beyond the 20%. I don't owe them a dime. So they only get paid if my rating increases. So it's legit. So another thing that I did was I saw those advertisements for the like government um uh what was it the, the government like monthly card you can get to, to pay for like rent and medical expenses and groceries or whatever it's some sort of government program that uh that you could possibly qualify for and so I, I went ahead and took their little questionnaire and they called me and, you know, we went over everything, you know, my income and if I was on Social Security or, or not Social Security, but uh, um, Medicaid or Medicare, which I'm not. And they, they said that I was qualified for, I think it was like $600 a month. And... I was also qualified for uh, medical insurance at no cost. No cost uh, for me, which I still have to like verify. I just got something in the mail from them today. It's in my back pocket. I haven't read it yet. Um, but potentially, you know, that's $600 extra a month for my bills and stuff and groceries and whatnot rent you I, I think they said you could use it for whatever you need it for you know it's to help out with your bills and then the medical insurance I mean it's like standard medical insurance with you know uh, prescription coverage and I mean medical coverage there's co-pays but it's like you know fifty dollars for a visit it's, it's like your normal co-pays so you know, I'll I'll see what that's all about, and hopefully it's legit. I could use the extra six hundred dollars a month. So, what the hell is this guy doing? You know, I had 
thought about looking into since I'm basically on my own right now in my apartment trying to get some sort of um, financial help I mean just given what I get paid every month and my disability check that I currently get I have my budget to pay my bills with a little bit less left over for whatever I need a little cushion wiggle room I don't have to have it but it would be nice if I did you know if I'm eligible for it why not so those are the two programs that I've potentially gotten um, I have a a meeting uh, I don't remember what's August something uh, to talk with the, the medical person at the uh, trajectory to get the ball rolling on appointments or whatever I need to do find out the next steps and I guess to finalize getting my application done and I'll probably have to they'll probably have to set up some sort of like PDF um, portal for me to sign all the documents and everything make sure everything's all right before they find submit the finalized copy to the VA and then they can start you know scheduling me appointments for the various things that I need to do oh one of one of the things that I could possibly claim was uh, sleep apnea which my wife says I have I mean she says uh, there's sometimes I stop breathing and you know I snore really bad so so uh, I'll have to get a sleep study done which there's a company there, there's a, a place in um, New Braunfels that does sleep studies like right next door to my uh, ooh, hold on <clears throat> random quarter on the ground that's nice I think sleep, the sleep apnea rating was 50%. So if I got those two that were 50%, just just those two alone, there's my 100% right there. So I have a feeling between all of those claims, even if some of them are denied, I think I'm still going to come out of it at, with 100%. So even if it's not 100%, even if it's like 80 or 90 that's still a lot more money than I'm making now. And potentially I wouldn't have to work. Even if it was like, you know, <clears throat> oh, I, I don't know. But anyway, uh, Even if I only got like $2,000, I'd still be able to live on $2,000. You know, that's, I'm, I'm netting at work basically like $2,400 a month. And so that's almost how much I'm making it at Amazon. So my, my take home per week is like 600 bucks. Sometimes a little bit more. So, but I'm hoping for the, the full 100% because that means I wouldn't have to work anymore. And I would have enough to keep my apartment, get a new vehicle, which I already have one picked out. Um, and even with you know, my bills that I currently have, plus a car payment and full coverage insurance, I'm still gonna have like two grand a month, or even you know, like $1,000 a month to hike on. You can hike for a month on $1,000. Even staying in hostels and doing food resupplies and possible hotels, $1,000 a month, 
that's totally doable. So I wouldn't have to save money to go hike a trail. I could do it on my current income. And of course everything's auto paid and I get direct deposit. So, you know, my money would be there in my account every month. That's the goal right now. That's the goal. I just have to find somebody to take my cat for a while until I got back. Which between my two daughters and my wife, one of them, one of them would, would be willing to take the cat for however long I'm hiking a trail. You know, and then, you know, next year rolls around, I hike the next trail and you know, the cat will go back to their house again, you know, or have them come over like once a day between the three of them, you know, work out a schedule where somebody comes in once a day and says hi to the cat, make sure he has food, water, the litter box has changed, you know. I'd hate to do that because, you know, he'd only see somebody for like 15, 20, 30 minutes a day and he'd be by himself in that apartment for the rest of the time. Um, I'd rather he went with somebody at their house where they're there all the time or as at least as much as I am in my apartment, you know? So, something would be worked out. So, I'll just kind of let y'all know right now, the vehicle that I had, had picked out was a, uh, since I'm not winning the lottery and I can't get the Range Rover that I want because it's like $108,000. Um, I did a, a build on the Ford um, website for uh, one of the Broncos. It was the Badlands edition. Um, totally pimped out. It was like uh, forty-eight to fifty-three thousand dollars. It was you know with like four thousand dollars down. For 48 months, it was only going to be like $515 a month. You know, and I plan on trading in my truck and having a couple of thousand dollars more than that to put down, potentially. So, the payment, monthly payment won't be that high. And if I can go a 60-month uh, lease or a 60-month term, I would instead of the 48-month. You know, I'll give myself the full five years instead of four to pay it off. You know, I could, and, you know, I could potentially pay like a, like an extra 500 or a thousand dollars a month to pay it down quicker. Who knows? So, that's the two big things that have happened that are ongoing at this point. Um, It'll take me probably half a year to get this disability sorted out, which is fine. I mean, honestly, the longer they take to get me my rating, the bigger my lump sum check's going to be. <laughs> so I don't mind if it takes, you know, six, seven, even eight months to do. It just means that I won't be hiking the next hiking season. It'll be the season after that. But... Once I get my rating and it's a hundred percent, I will be hiking that next that new next through hiking season. So if whether it's 2025 or 2026, it's gonna happen. It's just by then I'm gonna be 55 or 56 years old. Hopefully, you know, my health doesn't degrade any more than it is now. And my goal also is before I hit the trail to have quit smoking because I'm definitely going to have to have quit smoking before I hit the, the Pacific Crest Trail or the Continental Divide Trail just because of the elevation I'm going to be at for a lot of the time. I don't need to be having elevation sickness and 
you know, passing out on a mountainside and tumbling to my death, you know. <laughs> Nobody wants that. So between quitting smoking and, you know, doing some deep breathing exercises to increase my lung capacity and kind of get my lungs to heal as much as they can, um, that's, that's also one of my goals. So... Um, I did, one of the things that I ordered off of Amazon, I found, I was looking for some Ultra Lone Peaks, because the, the, the Ultras that I have now are designed for um, walking on concrete and asphalt. I mean, because that's, I mean, that's what I'm currently walking on every day. So... Um, I need I needed another pair of you know lone peaks um, for when I do get on some trails to hike on um, whether it's just having enough time here um, within the next year or so while this process is going on to maybe hike the, the Lone Star Trail you know I'll have a decent pair of shoes to do that with um, but I was looking for some Lone Peak 7s because I did not realize that the 8s were out yet. Well, there was a, a, a seller on Amazon, uh, Fleet Feet, I think is their, their, uh, store name. Um, they had a pair of Ultra Lone Peak 8s for like $94. I mean, if you look anywhere else, they're gonna be like $125, $150. So I went ahead and ordered them. They still haven't shipped and they haven't taken the money out of the account yet. So I don't know if it was a legit listing or not. Um, I guess we'll find out in the coming week or two weeks. Says I'm supposed to get it between like August 1st and like August 12th. So, I mean, I've ordered things before online that uh, the, the listing wasn't true. And uh, the one that I did before, they actually took the money out. But they refunded it later. And um, they never sent me my, my purchase. So I'm hoping this isn't that scenario. I actually want the shoes. I, I just recently ordered something from China, a, a doormat that had a picture in front of a waterfall, a hiker in front of a waterfall that I was gonna put on my back porch. Um, I, got a, I got a doormat for my front porch that says, you know, it looks like a, a wooden door it says definitely not a trap door. <laughs> it's funny. It's my D&D my &D nature. Um, but this one, it had the hiker standing in front of the waterfalls. But when I got it, the picture was supposed to be landscaped on the mat. Well, it wasn't. It was portrait on the mat. It was 90, 90 degrees from what it was supposed to be. So I did a, uh, got a refund for it. And they said, you know, we'll go ahead and give you the refund. You don't have to send it back. You know, that's my, that's how China works, I guess. But it w it was not what I ordered. I even took a picture of it and and added it to the the message. You know, so it was supposed to be landscaped. I mean, look at the 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 product listing. It shows the picture landscaped, and the the one I got was definitely portrait. So. The image would have been sideways the way I would have had it in front of my door, which is not usable in my opinion. So, I mean, it was only 19 bucks, but they refunded me my money. It, it was all good. And I, I don't have to have a doormat for my balcony. It was just would have been nice, you know, because I do go out there barefoot. And, you know, it'd be nice if I had something to wipe my feet on, 
and get the, the dust off or whatever before I walk in the house. So, I really don't know what else to tell y'all. Um, nothing much has been going on at all. I've been looking on like meetup.com to see if there are little events that I can go to to just, you know, find people to hang out with or whatnot. You know, socialize a bit with, with some people, but I'm not finding anything. Uh, nothing in the pagan community, really, and nothing in the LGBTQ community that is, is you know, calling to me to go uh, go hang out. And a lot of it's in Austin. I don't want to have to go all the way to Austin. I don't trust my truck on long distances. I mean, it's 26 miles. It's not long distances, but you know, I'm, I'm lucky at this point to be going back and forth to work the two, three miles per, per, per trip, you know? Like, I think it's like four miles round trip. Like a mile and a half there, and because I have to go around to the next exit and do a flip a bitch to come back. It's like three and a half miles. So it ends up being like four or five miles a day. So I'm trying to keep my mileage down on my truck. And you know, it's a gas hog. That thing costs like $85 to fill up. I only put like $20 a week in it, you know? So I'm limited on my the distance that I can drive every week, you know. And, you know, I have to go get groceries and I have some running around I have to do to, you know, buy things for the apartment or whatnot for the cat. Um, it's main, mainly just groceries and gas. But every once in a while, you know, I may want to go see a movie or something, which it's not that far from where I'm at to go see a movie and, and it's only like 12 bucks to go see a movie so but lately there haven't really been any movies that I wanted to go to a movie theater and see um and nothing's really grabbing my interest so I've been, you know, watching TV. Well, my streaming sites on my Fire TV, you know, Paramount Plus, Disney Plus, Plex. Um, what else? Maybe one or two other streaming sites that I have on my TV that I can watch stuff on. So, and pretty much everything I want's on there. So. I don't even really need cable or satellite. You know, I just stream stuff. I mean, that's what I was doing on my laptop anyway. Just now I have a 32 inch screen that I can sit in my Lazy Boy recliner and watch, you know? So. There's one uh, through hiker that I've been watching lately. Uh, his trail name is Quadzilla. I don't know if you've seen him or not. He's an, uh, an Asian guy. He's hiked all the major trails. He's done the, the AT, the BCT, the CDT, the, the Terrora, and several other trails. I think he's done like the AT three separate times. The last time he did it, actually he did the last thing he did before the what he's doing now is he did a triple crown in a year through hike that was that was amazing I would not have done that I don't I do not want to hike four season hiking 
that's that's unreal i don't like being cold uh and you know hiking in the mountains in the winter is not my thing you know uh, i did enough of that when i was in the army i'm in upstate new york you know i don't want to get frost nip or frostbite again so uh yeah i think i'll stick to the three season hiking and leave the winter for the professionals <laughs> But uh, right now he's doing another AT through hike, but he's doing it with a $1,000 complete trail budget, you know, beyond his, getting his gear. And he's, he's tried to get the cheapest gear he could find, you know, like Alibaba and stuff like that. Um, I think all of his gear and everything ended up costing him like $383 or something like that. And then he has $1,000 set aside for his entire through hike. So, and that's his, that's his challenge that he's put towards, to put to himself is to do a, a complete AT through hike on $1,000. So this is gonna be interesting. So if, if you want to, to watch him do this go to his youtube channel quadzilla q u a d z i l l a quadzilla it's definitely worth it another thing that i've been doing lately it's uh something that they've added to instagram called threads and my wife got me into that. And it's it's kind of like a, a Twitter version of Instagram, which is kind of cool. And it's, it's definitely different. So, I don't know, all the different social media platforms are becoming the same. I mean, Facebook has the little video shorts you can do and the little posts and and Instagram has the little video shorts you can do TikTok has video shorts they're all they're all becoming the same so it just you know depends on which one you like best or if you're like me you you post to all of them you know because you know I have followers on each one and they're not all on they're not all on all of the platforms so if you want to reach the maximum amount of your followers and subscribers you, you post them on all of them and you know even in even patreon even though nobody signed up for my patreon i've had that thing up for like five years now and nobody has signed up on my patreon and the links in my profile on youtube so i don't know why it's just you know no i guess because i'm not actively on a trail if i was actively on a trail i might get patreon subscribers i don't know but hopefully that's going to remedy itself in the next year or two depending on you know whatever my new va rating is going to be hopefully it all works out for me i'm definitely feeling more positive now than uh I have been you know, previous to moving into this apartment. I, I, I didn't know where my life was headed when, when the decision was made that I was moving out and both of the kids were moving out and my wife was gonna be getting an apartment by herself. It was not what I was expecting. I was expecting us to get an apartment together, you know, but that's not how it happened i mean we're not separated or anything but she wanted time to herself um to kind of to kind of you know kind of uh what's the word i'm looking for um recuperate after you know a lifetime of taking care of other people she wants some time to herself which i totally get um, and you know, we all still live in the same town basically. So it's not like we can't drive, you know, one block on the interstate down to go see each other, you know, 
even though we're in separate apartment complexes, well, me and my wife and my girls, the girls are in the same apartment complex in separate apartments. But, uh, but we can go visit each other, you know? And we get, you know, me time. And time for us to pursue our own interests, you know? Without having, you know, anybody else looking over our shoulder or, or asking, you know, why, why, why are you doing that? Or whatever, you know? There's no judgment. Not that there really was to begin with, really. But it gives you that level of anonymity to do what you want to do, you know. But, you know, conversely, you know, I'm by myself. I have a feline roommate and that's it and he doesn't he does talk to me but you know it's not like I can truly understand what he's saying I know you know basically what he's saying because you know I can observe oh his food bowl's empty oh he needs water or his litter box is getting dangerously toxic you know <laughs> so and he he will talk to me and you know He'll meet me when I come home from work and, and meow at me and, you know, and I'm like, I missed you too and, and stuff like that. And, you know, he'll try to meow at me to keep me from going to work. And I said, no, buddy, I got to go to work. You got to pay the rent, you know. If you pay attention to your animals, you can converse with them. Animals are smart. They, they know, you know, sometimes what you're saying. And if you learn how to listen to them, you can understand what they're saying as well. And that's not just a pagan thing. You know, that's anybody who takes the time to understand their animals, you know? I know it sounds weird, but it's true. All right, well. I don't really know what else to talk about. I pretty much told y'all everything that's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it down here. My battery's getting low anyway, but we're already at just over 45 minutes. So definitely got to keep this thing under an hour. So if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. While you're at it, go ahead and mash that that like button on this video and the notification bell to be notified anytime I upload a new video to get those trails. That being said, y'all stay safe, y'all stay sane, and get out and hike a trail, man. You'll feel so much better and you'll thank me in the end. So, until next time, this is Gecko saying bye.